things. Let's uh, bring in my uh, guest this morning, uh, Andrew Mahato. How are you doing, sir? I am doing fantastic. Thanks for asking. All right. Let me uh, get your levels right there. Uh, now you sound good. Perfect. Yeah, thank you for stopping by our new studio here. Let me get, uh, let's see, I'm, I'm pushing all the buttons around. Oh, oh, if I'm going to push that button, I mean, need to slide over this way. Um, so cool. Um, how are you? T- how are you, sir? I'm lo- loving life. It's, it's a bit chilly out there today, but uh, I'm from Indiana, so it could, be, it could be worse. It could be snowing in minus 20, so I'm not complaining. And uh, one of the, you're the founder of uh, Newtown Connections here in the Bay Area. Correct. Uh, you've been in the Bay Area almost seven years now, right? Yes, uh, I've been moved down here April 2011. And uh, where, you came from Indiana. Yes. What got you from uh, Indiana to Florida? But d- days like today, actually. So I, I met a guy at a tennis tournament in Cincinnati, Ohio in 2010. And he convinced me that I should come down and we can play tennis in Florida in wintertime. So I visited December 2010. And I asked myself, why, do I, why am I still living in Indiana? And I picked up my stuff three months later and moved down here. Were you, uh, you were a CPA. Or are you still a CPA? Technically, I'm still licensed, but I don't practice anymore. All right, so you're a CPA in Indiana, and I, I'm born and reared in this fine. You got to say reared. Okay. Yeah. I'm born and reared in this fine state. Um, I don't think that I've ever been to Indiana. Well, if you like soybeans, corn, cows, and farms, uh, that's a place for you. Well, I like I like all that stuff. Um, but there's really outside of Indianapolis, which I, I lived there for eight years. There's not a whole lot to do. It's just from Indianapolis to Chicago. It's a three and a half hour drive of farmland and. Uh, Basically, that's about it. So really boring outside the big cities. And I grew up in a farm town, so that's uh, my claim to fame. I grew up in a farm town of 500 people. I uh, my, my family comes from uh, farm people in western New York. Um, I'm first generation off the farm. Yeah. But uh, but I, I, you know, I can say that and you're like, oh, like there's some connection with farm. There's no farm connection with farm people because my father, you know, he went into the military. Once he got out, he came down to Florida as well. And so the the farm life is a is a is uh, it's a myth it's a mythology in my world uh you know we went to the farm every uh, summer as children and ran around the acreage there uh but uh, i do not know what farm life is now were you raised on a farm no i was born in, i was raised in a farm town okay yeah, so we, we we grew up on four acres but we oh, okay four four my, acres is not 400 acres yeah all right yeah all right so you you came to tampa and when you first came to tampa because it's a very interesting story you come to tampa and you are an influencer now here in the uh, bay area you are bringing people together you're bringing young professionals together and this is one of the reasons why i'm having on today having on today for those of you that are entrepreneurial or uh, looking to uh, enter that world or maybe not maybe you are in just sales or yeah. you're, you're needing to network for whatever reason um, this is uh, one of the organizations that you want to uh, be a part of, and that is a new town connection. So I'm assuming I'm going to make an assumption on where this name came from. Yes, you came to a new town and you needed some connections. I, uh, you, you nailed you, it. You are a genius. <laughs> Thank Genius. You. Thank you very much. So in the beginning here, so you're a CPA. You're not a networker nope. by, you know, but uh, you are you a social butterfly, as they say? I've always been social, but, uh, you know, as a CPA, I, I'm, beh- I'm behind the desk crunching numbers all day long. So I never had a need to network until I moved here. Then, you know, I moved here knowing, knowing that one guy. And like many other people who moved to Tampa Bay, that when you move here and you're 30 years old or 22 or 42, that question is, where do you go to meet people? And that's why I started Newtown Connection. Well, bars, bars are usually a pretty good uh, place to begin. Well, it's bars, but also today with technology, a lot of people go on Bumble, Tinder, Match.com just to meet people. Well, this is one of the uh, things that fascinates me about you, and we'll get to your book here yeah. uh, as well. But you, you, or how old are you? I'm 36 now. 36 but years. But I pretend old. I'm 26. Okay, because you, 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 you know, you target the millennials. But I guess you're at the up upper end of the millennial. I always joke that I'm I'm the first millennial. The first millennial. Okay. I was born in 1981. So. But you have you wanted uh, uh, take the focus off of gadgets. Yes. You know, in this uh, generation, and st- are, are you trying to force the old ways on this next generation? I'm a bit old school. I didn't. I never had a cell phone until I turned 21. Wow. So imagine the people today. I, you know, of course, I hang out with people who are 21 today, and they grew up with cell phones since they were probably under 10. So why, yeah, why, why do they need to network uh, when they can just hop on? They are networking. They got their network in their hand. There's a lack of genuine connectedness from the phone. If I'm on a phone, I can text you. I can email you. I can Facebook you. But it's not a real conversation. It's just words. This is a real conversation, me and you, right now. And I push people outside of their comfort zone to go have a lunch, go have a coffee, because when I have an hour conversation with you or anyone else for over coffee, I actually get to know you versus a five-minute text conversation of 
hey, what are you doing tonight? I want to go out and grab a beer. I, I, you know, last week I did the Dale Carnegie course. I did okay. one of his courses. Uh, it was a three-day immersion course. And you know, that's one of the things that they do in these seminars, these courses, is they tr- they want to get everybody in the room out of their comfort zone. Yes. You know, it, and it, it opens up everything. That's That's all well and good when you're in a seminar setting. But when you're going, hey, I want you to join my club and, you know, it's it, and pay monthly dues yes. and I'm going to make you feel uncomfortable every single month. So that's the fun part is new. So Newtown Connections, we're a social club and it's not we're not never keen based. So I always tell people just because we're young professionals, which I define as 21 to 40 ish, that you're not going to show up and ask me, Andrew, nice to meet you. What do you do? We're more of, hey, Andrew, nice to meet you. Where are you from? How long have you been here? And it starts a real conversation, not for, solely based on that I'm a CPA and you know you're in entertainment or whatever. So, so our, at 45, I'm not allowed in your club. No, we do have people. <laughs> we do. You you do have uh, old yes. people like me in your club. I, did, I didn't say old, uh, but most people are in their 30s. Really, I, we have people who are 22. Again, if, stage of your life. If you're 45 and you're married and you have three kids, most likely you don't have time to go out to a social club. Right. Right. So it's a stage of life. If you're 42 and you're still single and we have single people, we have married people, but most people don't have kids because the kids, again, when I'm hosting a happy hour at 7.30 on a Wednesday night, most likely You're, you can't make it. Right. But you uh, you say that this is not a, uh, you know, this is not a singles group. No. However, you did meet, there are, by the way, I this this what I'm getting ready to yeah. say is based off of information at six months old. Are you still dating the woman? Uh, I'm, I'm engaged. I met my fiance through the group. Okay, all right. You met so, your fiance through the group yes. because in the article from the over the summer, it was your girlfriend at the time. Now, now we're engaged. Congratulations. So I, I joke that I just had to quit my job, start a company to meet, meet my future wife. Uh, you know, just just a few steps to meet my wife. Future now, wife. Uh, is is that an issue when it comes to these networking organizations? A lot of times they start off as uh, you know business oriented, but it turns into a, a singles mixer. Well, I'll, I'll take a step back in that. Most people, I do trainings, I, so I, I go to companies. Last week, I was at a bank and a financial advisory firm, and I train people during lunch usually how to network. So most people never had a class on how to network, and that's their go-to question of, you know, hey, Chris, you gotta go out, you have to go network. And you're like, okay, well, I don't know how to, I'm just gonna go ask people, nice to meet you, what do you do? So I train people, like, how to, just have a real conversation that's not about work, it's about you as a person. Like, I'm sure you're at Dale Carnegie, they teach the same thing of, it's not about me. What do I do for work? I want to learn about you as a person. I was uh, I was very surprised on how much of this business class was focused on personal relation on the relationship side of this. Yes. You know when you when I when somebody like me hears uh, how to win friends and influence people. I see. I'm, I'm naturally a social person. I'm naturally somebody who is generally interested, yeah. genuinely interested in what you have to say. Um, but. It seems like this was a course for psychopaths. Like, hey, come here. We'll teach you the like. How what, to talk to people? Yeah. yeah, what I already know. What I generally, you know, uh, you know, uh, is part of my nature. Well, we're going to share with other people. It's not their nature, so you could learn how to manipulate people. So I was, uh, I was, I, I entered this with a little bit of pr- uh, trepidation, but that wasn't the case at all. No. So again, with what we do, I I get people out of their comfort zone. Which we have introverts, we have extroverts. You know, people like me and you, easy. We can talk to anyone. Right. But there's a lot of people who, again, if they may feel that social, they have social anxiety. A lot of people who are connected to their cell phones, you know, they have that social, I, um, I got to get off my phone and talk to people in real life, which is different because when you're behind the phone, it doesn't really matter who I talk to. I, I can ignore people and whatever. But you're in a room of 50 people. You have to talk to people. People, they get nervous. Yeah, my uh, my wife just came back. So they had a family uh, a situation up uh, north that they had to go take care of and, uh and she was on the phone with me the other night and she, with this realization of, hey, I, I think I have social anxiety. I've, I'm starting to put it together now. I don't like to be in these kinds of situations, yep. uh, those kinds of situations. And now uh, and, and, and she's over 30 years old and yeah. she's just she's just now realizing, oh, it, I didn't like I didn't. I don't, I don't have to say this. <laughs> these situations that she found herself uncomfortable it's and uncomfortable. she, she yeah. thought it was the situation. There's something about that, about something over there. And she's finally realizing, holy crap, it may be me. So that's the fun part of what we do at Newtown is that there's a process to get in. There's an application and I either me or my team, we FaceTime and Skype people to get in the group so that we do that for a couple of reasons. But mainly I want to know your story. So if you say, hey, Andrew, I'm from New York. I've been here 10 years. I'm married. I live in South Tampa. And I love I love the Tampa Bay Lightning. So when you come to one of my events, I have your story. And then guess what? I act as a friend facilitator, basically. And when you come in, I introduce you to people in the group. So that takes away some of that anxiety. That's huge. 
So when you come in, either me or my team, there's four of us, we're there at every single event. So when you walk in that front door, you know that we're going to introduce you to five people immediately. So this, this, is, this isn't one of those situations where you're just setting up uh, an event then, uh, you know, raking in the money and nope. going, oh, get, here, get liquored up, knock yeah, yourselves out. Have a great time. Bye. All right. All right. No, so that's, 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 that's our key differentiator. Imagine that when you walk into that front door here and you're like, okay, I'm nervous. My first event, I don't know anyone. But you meet me. I was like, hey, Chris, follow me. We're going to meet five people. This is Jessica. This is Tim. This is Connie. This is Tracy. And I tell them, like, hey, guys, this is Chris's first event. He just moved here from New York City. And they're going to hop on. Oh, my gosh. Where, how long have you been here? Why did you move here? And immediately you, that anxiety goes away because people are asking about you, like what Dale Carnegie teaches. And now you're just having a normal conversation. It doesn't feel awkward. It doesn't feel networky. Because the uh, few uh, the networking events that I've been to over the years, yeah. uh, they're very, I don't know, I don't say rigid. Feels forced. Yeah, there you go. For, it feels very forced. Yes. And then it just feels like uh, we're, let's just start exchanging business cards because I don't know what else to do right I'm now. I'm collecting business cards. Right. And when I train in these, you know, I said on Friday I was at a financial advisory firm. And I was telling those people that, great, you've, you've collected 15 business cards. What's the point if you don't do anything with it? Because most of these people, they collect the business cards and they then sit there what? on their desk. And then what's, and I, what's the point of networking if you're just going to sit there and not do anything with the business cards? Like, I want to have a real conversation, get to know people. Andrew, when you first decided, because there's a lot of these networking groups or organizations here in the uh, Bay Area, uh, how did you find your niche? Re really, I tried it. I'm a yes man. So when I, when I go out, I, if you invite me to any event, as you're long as I'm, yes. I'm, I'm free... And I told people, like, I'm, I'm a CPA, but I would hang out with engineers, doctors, nurses, IT people, you name it, because I would ask them, like, Chris, where are, you, where are you going out tonight? And you're like, oh, I'm going to XYZ event. And I was like, oh, you mind if I come with? And you said, sure. So I, that's where I found my niche, because I went to, I swear, I have this, I've created a spreadsheet of 60, 65 different networking groups here in Tampa Bay. And they're the most random groups that you would never ever hear of, just because I've said yes to so many different things. Now you have uh, you've published a, a book as well, so you, you yeah. don't want to just say, "Hey, I'll just move to Tampa, I'll, I'll move to Paradise, I'll start a networking uh, organization, and live happily ever after." No, no, you have to get you have to keep going. No, the, there's I have this greater vision that I, my purpose is bigger than just being here and you know having fun in Florida. That I've, I've read I've read Dale Carnegie's books. And that he's inspired me that I should be doing something in this world because he, he wrote his book in 1936, I believe. And, you know, like, why, why can't I be the next Dale Carnegie of how do you really go out and meet, make friends and meet people today? And that is uh, something else that is um, uh, a, a promising for me. Again, I, I think what it was, I don't know what it was. Once I got into me, see, I'm, I'm from, I'm like you, I'm from a small town here in Florida, Ocoee. Yeah. Uh, you know, raised with, I guess, farmers' values. And, and then the more that I got into the media, because I started the media when I was 20 years old, the more that I got into the media, the more I get, I'm going to use the term psychopathic, but I, I, that's not the, that's not fair. Obviously, I think what I'm trying to describe is those moments where I would see this lack of empathy in, uh, in the decision making. Um, and, uh, and when it gets more, more and more focused on the bottom line and less and less focused on people, I just, I don't know. I just, I just, I just ended up with an icky feeling, and it's only been recently in my dealings with cords and running into more oh, people yeah. like you that I'm starting to uh, have a renewed faith in those people who are more capitalistic minded. Because I've start, you know, I've started to get, I started to get that feeling that man, maybe, maybe it's just it's capitalism itself. Maybe it just it promotes this this greed and this this fear. So that you turn off this part where you're connected to human beings and you just stay focused on how do I improve my bottom line so I don't get fired or so that my wife doesn't leave me yeah. or, or whatever it is that's uh, going on. But I'm running into more and more people that are like you that are going, hey, listen, yeah, I'm, ex I'm successful. But so can you. You can be successful, too. And I'm not just going to sit back and, uh, you know, go, hey, you can be successful. I'm going to get out there and show you how to do it. And that's, that's funny you mention it because I do talk to you. I go to the University of Tampa or USF and I speak to their entrepreneur clubs or whatever and talk about how do you start a business? And I tell people, like, look, I went from being a CPA. I could have lived a happily ever life in Indianapolis, being a CPA, making good money, having a white picket fence. But to me, I found my purpose of I love connecting people. I, I'm, I'm great at math. I can be a CPA, but that's not my purpose. My purpose is to connect people. That's why I wrote this book. We're working on expanding to different cities. We're going to Dallas here in a few months that Newtown Connections should be in every major city. And we're launching a mobile app here soon that the true vision is I want to go to every major city 
start a new town connections, and that eventually through this app, I can go to these cities. Say I go to uh, Dallas, Texas, or Austin, Texas, and we're there. I get to connect with other like-minded people at one of their events, and there's another me or another, whether it's a guy or girl, doesn't matter, but there, someone's there, and they're going to introduce me to 5 or 10, 15 people in Dallas, Texas. When I saw I'm there, I feel like I'm at home, that I just now have 15 friends in Dallas like that, and that's what I'm really working toward. Um, in the uh, studio right now, we have Andrew Mahoda, uh, Newtown Connections, and you have a book as well. And that is uh, Connecting in a Disconnected World, which is available through Amazon.com. And in that, you outline 18 proactive steps. So what yes. are some of those steps? So I, I believe the first step I put out there is you have to find your happiness. A lot of people today, like you said it, that... Easier we, said than done. We go, we, well, we all go through the motions. That, and I, I tell people, you got, you got step outside your comfort zone. That's one of, the, that's one of the steps, too. But finding your happiness that a lot of us get brainwashed that I have a degree in accounting, you have a degree in marketing, I have a degree in engineering, that this is the path I have to stay on because I have a degree in marketing or engineering. And it took me 34 years to figure out, who cares? I have a degree in accounting, but that's not like why I'm here. That's not, I'm, doing accounting doesn't make me happy. So finding your purpose? Yes. Finding your purpose, you find your happiness? It, it was, that, that, I say that, but it's, it's very hard for people to figure out, like, how, how do you find your purpose? I my you know my mom a few years ago because I was having uh, some issues with melancholy. We'll call we'll use the terminology from Dale Carnegie's day, yes. suffering from melancholy, and uh, and so she gave me a book called Purpose Driven Life, uh -huh. and I was like, oh, that, that's 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 genius. You, you're right. If you have purpose, if you feel like you have a sense of purpose, then you're getting you're hopping out of bed every single day because you have something that you have to get to. Yes. Now, granted, the premise of the book is the, uh, the your purpose is Jesus. <laughs> Come to find out, so you know. Uh, that took that took some things <laughs> a off. Bit different, yeah. Yeah, it took the, some things off the uh, table for me, but it is a uh, very very true. What are so? What's another one of the? Or I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I'll say so. In, in regards to your purpose, I tell people that figure out what are your gifts and figure out what are you what are you better at than anyone else? Because that's what that's what turned the, the table for me is people started asking me, Andrew, how do you have so much energy? Because I, I used to go to network. Well, I still do. I go. I was going to networking events almost two to three a day, Jeez. four days a week. That's why, I, you know, again, I've only been here seven years. I knew one person. Now I know several thousand people because I went to all these events. And my friends, how do you have so much energy? And I started thinking about, I'm like, you start asking why. So that's in the book, too, of you start asking why. Like, why did I meet Chris? Why am I here? Why do I have so much energy? And you start doing, like, this, you know, train of thoughts of why, why, why. And that eventually led me to my purpose. Like, I have this gift of natural energy that I can go to three events a day. I don't get tired. And I can remember people's names. I'm a good people connector. And that's what gave me that courage to start my own business because I have these gifts. And that, that's my purpose is to start Newtown Connections. You know, a lot of people, uh, you know, if watching this or would see something like that, well, I, I love people too. I love to connect people too. Yeah. Uh, you, you know what? The, you know, they, I don't remember what book it is, uh, but they call people like that pollinators. They, they're, they're, they're just hopping from one group to another group yeah. to another group, and at the same time, they are connecting the, those groups in their uh, own way. So if uh, somebody is that, they're going, all right, all right that, that sounds great. That's me. How yeah. do I make a living doing that? Well, that, that, that's the tricky part is, for me, I, I thought the same thing. I'm like, great, I'm an I'm, I'm awesome people connector, but how, how do I turn this into a living? And that's where this new – I was like, well, if I'm going to turn this into a living, I'm going to start a club because, again, I'm a business guy, and I'm going to make monthly membership. That's where revenue comes in from. So – you have to put the two. You have to pair the two and two together. Of well, great, I'm great with people, but I mean that's great to have. You have that gift, but what, how is, how are you going to turn that into, into a business that's viable? And even what I do today, it's running event. I run events what two, two times a week. It's a lot of work and a lot of energy. So yeah. that's where you're like, great, I'm good at connecting people, but I don't have the energy to do what I do because my energy level is just insane of all the stuff I do. So when you lay down at night, are you going right to sleep? I do fall asleep, but you know, because like, you're exhausted. Well, yeah, I, I, run, I run at 90 miles an hour for 18 hours a day. Um, what about inspirations early on? You said that you had some thoughts that led to uh, where you are, but were there some people along the way or some uh, some moments in your life? I would just say that always, I put in my book too, that every person you meet matters. And that's where I say, again, you start figuring out like, well, I met you today. I'm, at, I'm, at, I'm here today because I'm at Chords. I'm at Chords because I'm my friend Kimberly. So again, it took three three layers of people to get here where I am today. If I, if I didn't see my friend Kimberly in St. Pete three weeks ago, who introduced me to Chords, who introduced me to you? 
you know, I think that's one of the things that uh, that had a negative impact on me is because since I'm I, I I'm come from a small town and I'm naturally a hey how are you doing yeah. and I want to get to know your story. Uh, it took a while to realize how that was being taken advantage of that part of my personality yeah. and that way too many people over the years. And I, I don't know if you know my uh, backstory or not, but I was uh, I did radio in this town for since 1998. Um, you did a morning show at uh, 97 actually to the alternative rock yeah. station Fisher and Seth Fisher and boy for uh, over 10 years. And so when I'd meet somebody, I, I don't have a what do they call that? Uh, 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 an ulterior motive. Um, I, I don't have an angle. I met a new person and that excites me. Yeah. But what, what I realized, it took me a long time it, 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 and I had to take a couple of uh, you know blows to the chin, but I realized how many people that I was meeting that that's all was going in their head is, oh, this person's on the radio. What can he do for me? And exactly. once I started to sense that more and more, I really started to withdraw on it. You know, I, I don't know, started to back back away from people. No, it's it's tricky that I'm similar a similar position now where I, I I know a lot of people and people say Andrew, can you do this for me? Can you do this? I'm like I, I can't. I, I I do say yes to a lot of events, but I can't I can't help everyone. And people and I'm very aware that some people want to use me because I know a lot of people. Like oh, you know the CFO over here? Can you introduce me? Like who are you? So it, it, you have to be cognizant of what people what are what are their intentions? Is it genuine or are they trying to use me? And then again, that's, that's a sp- tricky dance you have to do with people. <clears throat> I told Cords uh, last week he came on the show. We were chatting about, about some stuff and I told him that uh, when I first met him, because he was so nice and so genuine, I'm like, he's too nice and too genuine yeah. because I had become jaded. Yes. Uh, but I, uh, you know, walked that back. I said, when I first met him, I go, I had my, my head. I had to, uh, you know, contemplate, is this guy a bullshitter? Is he bullshitting me? Uh, but he wasn't. He is. Uh, he is legit. And um, like I said, it was, it's nice to meet more and more people like that. Well, to go, to, to go back to your question about the inspiration, the inspiration for what I've done is that I through all this networking, I've been out here in Tampa Bay. I've met so many people who felt the same way as I did. So when I when I've been out networking, and I've heard the same story of I just moved here. I don't know anyone. It's so hard to meet people today. I'm sick of using Bumble. I'm sick of going on Tinder. These people have given me the inspiration to do what I do because I've heard it from a thousand people that. It's, it sucks me, making friends today. It's not easy. It's uncomfortable. It's awkward. Who wants to go on Bumble? Even like Bumble has their new, like they have a BFF app. You're like, oh, I can go on Bumble and I can be, I can, I can be best friends with you, Chris. Yeah, luck, luckily, I'm old and I'm married, so I don't even have to worry about that kind of stuff. But that's, that's what most, again, people in our 20s and 30s, we deal with all the time that we think it's super easy to go out and have, have this kind of this back and forth dialogue. But again, without me being an inter- intermediary, it's, it's a bit awkward. You know, what? and one of the things that uh, what you're teaching and what I saw in uh, Dale Carnegie, um, you know, when you leave that conversation that you're talking about, when you first meet somebody, um, the instead of having that thought of, OK, now that I know this person, who are they connected to and what they can do for me? As you leave that conversation, yes. you're driving away, you go, what a cool person. What who do I know that can help them? Yes. What What do I have in my arsenal that could help that can benefit that person? Exactly. So. Again, like every every day, I get help. Maybe five random people on LinkedIn add me on LinkedIn. I'm, you know, I, I, LinkedIn and Facebook; those are my two biggest platforms. And I get random people, and usually I say, "Sure, like I'll accept people on LinkedIn." I, and I always respond, says, "Hey, Chris, thanks for adding me on LinkedIn. What can I do for you?" Because again, it's it's that whole different mentality of the reci- reciprocity. Like I'm sure Dale Carney preaches that I, I believe in the reciprocity. That Is, do you believe in it as a fundamental law of nature? I be, I be, or a philosophy approach to life. I believe in people, and that I believe that it doesn't. Of course, it doesn't always work out this way. Or if, if I do something, if I scratch your back, that you're going to scratch my back. And again, that doesn't always work out that way. But I genuinely believe that. Again, I get to know you. I'm not going to do it for just any random person. But if I get to know you, we become friends. But friends, if we're friends, I'm going to scratch your back. Then down the road, I'm expecting that sometime you're going to get me when I ask for a favor that you'll pay it back and that you're not going to say, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm too busy, I can't help you out. Yeah, that was, uh, again, I, and I, I'm sorry that I'm bringing this back to me. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm just coming out of this phase, that's why. I'm just coming out of this negative 
um, just everybody who's out for themselves kind yeah. of a, a no, phase. That's, that's where we are in the world today. But we're not. We're not. You know, it's easy. That's where I was. I might try and go, that's just where we are. It's because of the stressors of our environment. Uh, we're in a hyper evolution. And I mean, societally, yeah. ev- not, not genetically, you know, evolving, but this uh, this cultural evolution. And it's it is it is breakneck speed and people are scared out of their minds. And so they they circle the wagons psychologically and so yeah so it becomes all about them and trying to get through that moment so it's almost like i not only went yeah this is these are the times you live in but i also went when and i can't expect anything other anything else from these people but it's not true there are plenty of people out there like you like courts and hopefully i'll be yes. in that category one day as well and, and, that, and that's what, that's what gets me going every day is that when i meet all these people through newtown connections and people join our club that there is such a demand for what I'm doing that, you know, I run two events a week. Each maybe has tonight we're doing kickboxing class. I'll probably have 20, 25 people show up tonight for a kickboxing class. Uh, and then we go volunteering and then we do happy hours. Wait, wait, wait. So, so the, the networking event you're putting on is a kickboxing, a kickboxing class. Well, that's the whole fun. I run a social club. So I, here's what I train people on too, that. Oh, I tell you, I, I, I have a complete, I don't even know what, uh, what do, what do I do? Yeah. yeah. So Newtown Connections, we run two events a week, roughly eight to ten events a month, and they're not just a happy hour at a bar. So we do gym classes, we volunteer every month, we do, I'm doing Millennial CEO Speaking Series now, so I bring in another speaker under 40 who's a CEO of a company, and me and him and her have a talk for an hour uh, in front of usually 30, 40 people. Um, we do paddle boarding when it's warm. We do sports activities. Are those uh, those things, are you are you putting those online live as well? Or? Yeah, that's me. So... I set up all these events. I'm at 98% of the events right now. And so again, the whole the whole philosophy here is that networking happens every day, whether we're here at the you know radio radio show today or I go to church or I'm a volunteer or I'm at the gym. Like networking happens everywhere you go cuz people are always going to ask you what do you do. So the, I I just put it in a frame like, yeah, we're going kick, kick kickboxing class tonight. 20 people, we're having fun, we're working up a sweat, kick, you know, kicking some butt. And people are going to ask, like, oh, hey, like, nice to meet you. Like, I, I don't know. Who's Maria? I'm like, oh, that's Maria. She has moved here from Venezuela. And then people are saying, oh, Maria, like, what, so what do you do? But it's in a kickboxing class, so it doesn't feel so ne- right, networking. Right, right. And people, again, when, when, when you're kickboxing or you're doing yoga or we're volunteering, it doesn't come off as salesy. Is, uh, is this – you were talking a little bit earlier about awareness and about uh, these thoughts that you had, these epiphanies along yes. the way. Have you have – you, because I feel like there's a certain amount of uh, self awareness that one has to have in order to see those kinds of things. Again, those aren't some, and that's not something you see every day. Yeah. Has, has, does this go back to your childhood? Have you always been somebody that has uh, have had that awareness about them? I don't think so. I, I the biggest thing I've learned is that I had to do something that I've never done before. It was move here. I, I, I was born and raised in Indiana. I spent my first thirty years in Indiana. I really had to get outside of my comfort zone and take that chance and say, you know what? I, I, visit, I visited Tampa, like I said, 2010, and my gut, a lot of people don't listen to their gut and their intuition. I visited here, and my gut says, Andrew, you need to move to Tampa. And I listened to my gut. I mean, I, I listened to it before, but not, not very often. So there was nothing that forced you away from India, and you're like, oh, something's happening back here. I just don't want to deal no, with them. Like, it's just, it, was, it was that feeling. And a lot of stuff I do, I've, once I made that big move of going from Indianapolis to here and get it leaving everything I knew behind and like not having to start over that really forced me. I was like, how are you going to, it's the survival tactics of I'm moving to Florida. I know one person. Oh my gosh, I have to meet people. I have to establish myself. I have to make friends. I have to go out and learn about Tampa Bay. That was a huge leap of faith. And once I was here, that gave me that courage of, okay, I'm doing this. I'm making friends. I'm trying different things. I'm salsa dancing. I'm being a big brother, you know, playing beach volleyball. You know, I wasn't playing beach volleyball back in Indiana, but I moved here and, you know, for, do something different. Well, uh, for those who are uh, are watching the Wake Dot Show and they're sitting behind their computer at work, they're working on something there. They've got this, you had a butt in their ear listening to the show today. Um, wh- who is your demographic? What kind of people uh, does this social network benefit? So typically, it is people who are twenty one to, like I said, forty, forty five ish, um, young professionals who are just whether you're new. I always I always joke people. People always ask me, Andrew, I'm not new in town. Can I still join? And the answer is yeah, of course. We, it's whether you want to make new friends or you're new in town. It's just it's a great way to go out and meet people today. That's again, it's it's in real life, and doing fun activities and events. Not because we have some people who don't drink, some people who drink, 
again, the happy, like, anyone can run a happy hour every single week. Those are boring. Like, after a while, you're like, okay, great. We're going to a bar in Soho. I'm like, I'm bored. Because like right there, when you go to your webpage, the, uh, right there at the top are a couple of people paddle boarding. So yeah. I'm assuming you do that as well. We you do get... paddle boarding in between usually April and October. So it, Not this time of year? <laughs> not, not, not yet. But what, I, what I've learned through all, I've, I've hosted over 200 events in two and a half years, is that people who, go, who do these paddle boarding excursions with us, who do the yoga, who do volunteer activity with us, when you meet the 15 or 20 or 25 people at the event, you establish a better connection because you're doing something different. We're out paddleboarding 15 people at Fort DeSoto. I've learned that those 15 people become true friends because it's two hour and you're like, you're there together. You're doing the same stuff. You're building that rapport between each other versus if I'm at happy hour at a bar, it's just standing around at a bar is drinking, but it's the activity, the volunteering, the paddleboarding, uh, doing some cooking class. It's something different where, you feel connected to the other people because you're all going through the same experience. So that's what, you know, again, I like to do at Newtown is get people out of their comfort zone. Let's do a cooking class. Let's do yoga. Let's do paddle boarding. Let's do something different where, you know, you're like, okay, I've never paddle boarded before. I'll try it. Yeah. I, I picture that if you're going to put something together in this uh, modern time, all those activities you just talked about were all games in your app. Let's yeah. paddle board on our app. Let's, uh, let's kickbox on our, on our phones. Uh, so it's cool to see that you are um, are bringing people away from their phones. No, no, no. We're not just going to sit here at a bar and drink for two hours yeah. and hop down on your phone and collect a couple of business cards and then yeah. go home and be uh, depressed. We're going to. Yeah, that, that's I've, I've read so many studies out there that this this loneliness or it's almost depression where people feel so socially isolated that again, if you just move here, and I had a young woman message me on our, on our Instagram page today, today. She's like, I just moved here from, I believe, San Antonio, Texas. She's like, I don't know anyone. I've been here four months. She's like, I don't have any friends. Imagine for four months you just move here. You have zero friends. You right. go to work. You're depressed. You sit at home. You watch Netflix, and it's, yeah. it's super depressing. And then how, how, how that affects your health. That. And supposedly we have a whole generation of, of this coming up, right? Mm -hmm. Now you're dealing with uh, the millennials uh, week in and week out. Every year. Do you do you see? Is it true, and from your experience, that there is that much of a difference from this generation coming up that has been raised with technology versus you know you you you're at the bottom end of yes. Generation X or, or the top end of the millennials? It, it is it, it is different. Like I'm thirty, if I'm thirty six. If I'm hanging out with someone who's twenty one or twenty two. I'm I, I'm attached to my phone, but not really. Like I don't. I'm not on Snapchat. I don't. I don't have time to deal with that stuff. I text people. I'm on Facebook a little bit, but people who are younger, like I see it. Like they're on their phone all the damn time, and they can't. Like I feel like they're addicted to their phone. That I'm. I'm on Snapchat. I got to do this. I got to post on Instagram. It's a job. And like it's just, it's crazy to me that yeah. I put I put things on social media, but then I walk away. You know, I'm, I don't have to be the constant, the constant interaction on my phone. It's weird every time I uh, meet somebody, say, uh, Cords will be bringing somebody through the uh, studios here, da da da. And yeah. uh, hey, this is uh, Fisher, if you know, from '97 X, da da da. And most people, you know, of a certain age, yeah. they if they've been here in the area, they they know me from the radio. Uh, but under a certain age, they just they they all say the same thing. I'm sorry, I don't listen to the radio. Yeah, I mean, even for me, I, I mean, I listen to radio when I'm driving, but if I'm at home, it's just you know Spotify or Pandora or iHeartRadio. You know, it's all through it's all through apps, and it's just different generation now. I, I've uh, I've got I don't know what it is, but I'll drive in silence a lot. Okay. No no radio, no Spotify, no any. And, and for me, it I'm a, I'm a little on the weird side. Um, nothing wrong with that. No no no, you're right. Uh, nothing. Everybody's a little weird. Yeah. But uh, it's not that I'm trying to meditate while I drive, but it's trying to get close to that uh, that that place. So that I'm not thinking about the traffic I'm stuck in. Yes. I'm not thinking about the anxiety of where I'm going or the anxiety of where I came from. Just kind of being that moment. So I guess I use that. I, I would say, man, like eight times out of ten, I'm driving with nothing on in the car. Yeah. I mean, some, sometimes you have to. Uh, there's so much clutter every day. Like you know, you wake up in the morning. You said it. I I, I, go, I go to CNN this morning. And I'm like, okay, now we're going to talk about the State of the Union address. And like I said, whether you love it or you hate it, there, it's that's why it drives me crazy today that there's. We're at the opposite ends of the world where you either love it or you hate it. There's not this middle ground of, you know, I, I respect your ideals that were different, but we'd still be friends. It's, it's like now it's, oh, if you, you don't vote for a person. I, vote, I, I don't like you. I hate you. Uh, one, of the, one of the reasons I think it's like that now, well, I, I don't know. It's uh, when it comes to, say, whether it's Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton, yeah. right? Let's take two very polarizing figures. I think that those figures become blank canvases for our own 
uh, fears and desires. Yeah. So um, you look at your guy, you're the person on your side, and then all of your hopes and dreams you project onto that person, and it's clear as day. You're as clear as day when you're looking at uh, Donald Trump going, this, I mean, I've taken those phone calls on the air. I'm sure. Uh, before I started the show, I was doing uh, an AM show. So that's mainly more of your right wing talk, right? I, that is not me. I'm, I'm a, if, if you're going to put me, if you're going to have to, la- if you're going to label me that way, then I'm, you got to make, I'm a centrist then. Yep. Um, and, and uh, so we'd have these uh, talks and, and the, the calls from men that you can tell are in their 50s, in their 60s, adults going, can can you guys feel it? This is our savior. This is the savior we've been waiting for talking about uh, Donald Trump. And and the same thing happened eight years prior when yeah. Barack Obama yeah. came in. You flip flip the flip the coin there, and you had people going, "This is it. This is the savior we've been waiting for." And then uh, you know, conversely, or uh, when you look at Hillary Clinton, the you know the negative that yeah. gets projected onto her. Again, I I I don't I don't think there's any truths or many truths in what we say or feel about these people, except for what it says about us. Uh, and I, and I, so I think these political figures, no matter how this way or that way they are, we have a tendency to make them the, the savior or the, the creature, the, uh, the exact opposite of a savior. Yeah. And like I said, in my, in my opinion that I, I, I believe in the good in everyone and that's, you know, at Newtown Connections, I don't talk about pilot. I'm like, Hey, you vote for whoever don't, you know, don't bring it in the group because it is so such a divisive topic today. But at the end of the day, like I, I love living here in America I want to see the U.S. be successful, and you know it's my job to bring people together and bring it. Like I said, bring it back to a time before when we didn't have the cell phones that you had to talk to people in real life and have nice conversation. And I, I put it on Twitter yesterday that get to know your neighbor. Start start. Everyone wants to be a part of your community. Here hmm. here's some advice. Hmm. I, I say hi to my neighbors. I introduce myself. I'm like hi. I wave to people and I smile because that's where I come from. And I think a lot. It drives me. You know, another thing that. It's frustrating for me uh, when I'm here in Florida that I say hi to my neighbor and someone just, they, they, they look down, they don't, even, they don't even acknowledge me. You're like, they're from New York. Well, I didn't say that. That's what I do. That's what I do. In my head, that's what I do because I'm a, I'm a waver and a yeah. hi, how are you? Uh, my uh, wife's from Long Island. <coughs> Excuse me. She makes fun of those moments, yes. you know, because to her, for her at 31 years old, she has her group of friends. Uh-huh. She doesn't need anybody else. Yep. And that's it. She's good. Um, and now, but it, now it's make, it's making more sense to me why she does that. It's because of her anxiety. And so she's afraid that I'm going to make too many friends. And yes. all of a sudden she has to get to know somebody else that she doesn't want to know. And, and, that, and that's why I help push people outside of their comfort zone that I have an older brother. He's 40. He doesn't live here, but if he did, if he did, if he did live here, he wouldn't join Newtown Connections because he feels the same that I have my group of five friends. I'm 40 years old. I don't need any more friends. I'm good. And my whole thing is like, look, you don't know until you actually try something I'm like, Maybe you're going to meet someone who leads you to something else that you start a new business or a whole new world. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so again, like it's, you can live in your safe little bubble that's comfortable. You know what it is. You're going to have your oatmeal every day in the morning. You're going to the gym at LA Fitness at five thirty every day. And before, and I tell people like before you know it, you're going to be fifty years old, and you're like, what, what, have I, what have I really done with my life? And you're that's right. I, I push people I'm like, look, I'm a CPA. I could have done that life. I could have been there, done that married a girl and had kids and but the, what would my life be and I, I that's why i tell i tell people like find your purpose which again it's not easy to find your purpose i understand that but no it's not it, it is well, it took, again it took me 34 years and, and again i had to like really go outside and do something crazy of moving here and starting something to figure out like, oh my gosh i wasn't born to be a cpa just like you know you're probably not born to be an engineer or whatever i'm like Go to well, that, something that you right. Know. Those are just things that 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 bring some income in. Those those are yeah. things that bring in money so that you can have a food on the table and this and that. But yeah, but if you go, hey, well, this is who I am is my job. Well, yeah, that's a horrible life. And I think the other thing too that goes with purpose is fulfillment. So I hear it a lot today from millennials who are you know twenties and thirties that they they work at these companies. They want to have that sense of fulfillment that they're not just going to corporate America and working the ten hours a day. They want to have some. Some sense I'm doing something so with that my somebody life. else can become a multimillionaire and then look down at the people that helped him got there and go, well, if you would have did the same things I did, you could be in my position. Boo! You get five dollars an hour. Screw you. Exactly. Sorry, sorry. So, so I think millennials get a bad name and that like, oh, they're super lazy and they don't care. I'm like, they, I think it's the opposite. They do care. I agree. They like the flexibility and they want to have a sense of fulfillment. So 
you know, I hear it all the time. They want to be doing something. And I'm, that's my job to help them find that sense of fulfillment, whatever it is. Well, uh, think about when we get to the uh, the end of life. How often do you hear stories from people at the end of life? They're in their nineties, going, "Man, I wish I would have." Uh, I, I wish I would have organized my files better at work back. When, no, they talk about the the regrets they had from not traveling, um, yeah. or making more friends. You know, and, that, and that's I, I live it every day. Like, I, and I, I when I do these millennial speaking talks, usually my last question is, hey, you know, hey, whoever it is, like, what legacy are you going to leave behind when you're 85 years old, looking back at your life? What is your legacy? And I think a lot of people don't ever think of that. That oh, like. I'm like, okay, that's 50 years away or 60 years away. I'm not thinking 60 years down the road, but you should be. Like, as again, like, you may be 25, you may be working at a CPA firm, law firm, corporate America, what it does, doesn't matter. What are you moving towards to actually do, make, leave an impact? Like, that's what drives me is I see what I do. I impact people's lives every day. It's not just me, like, other people get together. I, people have gotten jobs through the group. Again, you, you never know until you try. People have gotten engaged through the group? Yeah. It's just, it's crazy to see what happens when. I compare myself to a modern day Hitch and that, you know, like the movie Hitch, Will Smith, he creates the environment or he sends people into this environment where you're going to meet people. I do the same thing with Newtown Connections where, again, seeing people, married people, you're going to have a natural conversation. But when you bring 50 people together who are like minded, who are there to, for the same reason, make friends, and you're out, you know, at a cooking class or doing a sports activity, things happen. The conversation comes up and I get so I, I am, I said, like, Hitch. I just create this environment where things happen, and it's up to you to start, you know, to start the conversation. I just create the environment to ha make it happen. So, so is that your legacy then? What's it? What's it going to say on your tombstone? It's, on my tombstone, it's going to say he really lived. Dot dot dot. Because again, like, I do a lot of stuff, and um, I, I watched the movie uh, Secondhand Lions, I believe, with uh, Robert uh, Duvall and uh, H Haley Joel Osment. Okay. Where you know uh, Robert Duvall and uh, there's another guy that these older guys, they were driving, flying an airplane through a barn. And then, you know, they, they're 85 years old, flying this airplane, try to fly through a barn and they pass away. And on their tombstone, I said, they really lived. And I was like, you know what? That's why I want my tombstone to say like, he really lived that I did everything out there. I left it all on the table. I have no regrets. Um, and, you, and you have to in the end and they have to, cause you're going to well, get to the end and go, what the hell did I do? Yeah. You so look, you look back in your life and say, Great, I spent 50 years doing this, that, and the other, and I had some kids, and like, what, what do you want your kids and grandkids to, to think of you? That, okay, great, grandpa worked at a company, and he didn't do anything else? That's just, that's it? Well, Andrew Mahoda, thank you so much for coming by today. I really appreciate it. It was a pleasure meeting you. It's a pleasure uh, meeting another positive person uh, here in the uh, Tampa Bay area. Uh, and, and it has a lot to do with the guy that's, uh, that owns this company, Bake More Pies, and the person that I partnered with uh, for this show, for the Wake Dot Show, and that is Cords Owen. Yes. And, uh, Thank you, you Cords. Yeah, you're, you're not the first person he's brought through here, but every single person has been uh, very positive and uh, contributing to society instead of taking away from society, it seems. And I'll, I'll leave it at that, that. I do believe in the laws of attraction, so that's, I think that's why so I'm that's here. So that's the secret to the secret. Is that you, start, you surround yourself with other positive, like-minded people, like Cords and you and whoever else, you're going to attract positive people. If you start hanging around negative people, you're going to attract negative people. So that's like my takeaway for the last is laws of attraction, stay with positive people and good things will happen. You'll start attracting more positive things. Like, in. like your granddad would say, if you uh, lie with dogs, you're going to get fleas. Exactly. I don't know what that, I don't know if that applies <laughs> to this or not, but yeah. thank you very much. It was no. a pleasure. Thank you, Chris. Thank Appreciate you. it. All right. So now you can, uh, you can let yourself out. Cause I, this is, it's just me. Okay. <laughs> it's just me. So you can, uh, you know, I think on your way out, there's uh, something we're shooting downstairs in the uh, uh, in the main studio. You can be a part of that. Do, do, do I get a, get a gift bag on the way out? Sure. Take one of these shirts uh, there. <laughs> well, see, those are from the other guests. So if, why don't you take the shark teasers one? You fear a paddleboard guy. Oh, there you see, I'm, some, I'm yeah. not even kidding. Uh, you see that on yeah. the table there. Why don't you go ahead and take the shark teaser shirt? And that comes from my buddy, uh, Keith Connors. Well, I, I do appreciate that. All right. All right. All right take care. Thanks, Chris. Unless you like the other one better. I think this is good. All right. <laughs> Take Thanks. care. It was nice meeting you. Mm.